Okay, welcome. I'm actually doing this multiple, multiple setup of uh, recording this video and uh, doing the live stream at the same time, so we can. It's some interstellar moments in here, but uh, yeah, welcome, welcome back to one of my live streams. My name is Seem Lund, and um, today I wanted to make a video about burning fat, losing that extra blubber. That Richest, creamiest fat in the world that you store for energy for the future use and uh, yeah basically the reason is that it's the new years and a lot of people are going on their diets they're starting to get fit and they want to lose that holiday extra fat that they gain during the Christmas and uh, holidays whatever you've got fat the main idea or the most important thing to remember is that you shouldn't focus on losing the fat you should focus on s sustainably creating a healthy lifestyle that promotes the metabolic engine of burning ketones and fat for fuel. You know, you want to become keto adapted because that's your body's most primal and uh, most energy, energy sufficient state where you're using your, where you're capable of running on your own body fat for fuel and you're not dependent on glucose then there are a lot of health benefits to this and uh, you know starting from cognitive repair better regulation of blood sugar and uh, many other protective elements of ketosis so i wanted to make this video about do these three things before eating to burn more fat with every every meal you should do these things before you eat anything what you want to do is to establish this state where your body becomes very sensitive to the intake of nutrition, whatever it may be, whether that be glucose, protein or fat, it doesn't matter. You know, you want to become more sensitive to the food that you eat. And the key things to this are caloric deficit and glycogen depletion. You practically want to cause some physical stress to your body so you'll have a reason to eat. The first things you definitely should do for that is to either fast or you know work out. Those two things are, are very easy ways of, of depleting your liver glycogen. What I like to do most, uh, most frequently is to simply go for a walk. Go for a walk before eating, you know, if you don't do intermittent fasting then that's fine. I do highly recommend you to at least go for a walk before you eat anything. Even as little as 30 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes is, is enough. It's all fat for your armor. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to blunt or to preemptively blunt the insulin response. That is going to keep you in this fat burning state for longer. It's going to suppress insulin and it's going to keep your blood sugar low as well because Insulin is the key hormone when it comes to regulating your body composition and if you want to lose some extra fat then you need to be in a state of low levels of insulin at least for the majority of the time as well. Again, you know, walking and exercise they're always they're already going to blunt the insulin response, but at the same time, if you take something like apple cider vinegar, if you drink some green tea, if you drink some coffee, if you have, let's say, some berries, some low-carb berries as your first snack, or cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, those things, they can help you to regulate your blood sugar and insulin a lot better. So, these things are the first foods that you should eat before anything. They're going to help you to keep your blood sugar and insulin in check during the meal and afterwards as well and maintaining stable blood sugar and insulin levels is is not just important for burning extra fat and losing weight but is also the most important thing or at least one of the most important things for your overall health fat is it and the last thing the last thing is also this strategy or this trick that is going to help you to burn fat after the food that you eat as well. It doesn't matter how low you keep your insulin, if you still consume too many calories, you're still going to prevent your body from using your own body fat. The key thing to do here is to simply satiate yourself, to keep your, to give your body enough nutrition in the form that you won't begin to crave more food. What do you mean it's empty? You've probably been in this situation where you eat something something very sweet, something sugary, refined carbohydrates, pastries, cake, some cereal, whatever it may be. And then you have this incredible high, you gain a lot of energy that is going to instantly be burnt off. And then you experience this hypoglycemic slump, this 
dip that is going to cause more sugar cravings is going to make you tired, exhausted, going to give you brain fog. And the reason is that the ups and downs of, in of insulin, they're the main problems of creating sugar cravings. And to prevent that, you simply want to eat food that is going to satiate you. Stuff like fiber, protein and fat, those things, they're the most nourishing and the most satiating macronutrients because you don't get the extra urge to have some more food afterwards. And um, another important thing is to take care of your gut microbiome as well. Because your gut microbiome literally, they tell your brain what foods you should eat. For instance, if you have a sweet tooth, if you get, get a lot of sweet cravings or sugar cravings, then that's because your gut bacteria have become accustomed to the constant stimulus of these sweet foods and they're expecting it and so far they they're gonna create the sugar cravings it might sound like brown science but there's a lot of research backing this up that you know the state of your gut is is the is actually more important for your cognition than you think to prevent sugar cravings and to maintain a healthy microbiome then you want to start off by eating some fermented foods and some prebiotic foods that are going to feed your microbiome and as funny as it sounds you know like you're going to feed your microbiome first before you feed yourself <laughs> my favorite foods for that are are some sauerkraut some onions garlic other fermented foods pickles cruciferous vegetables green leafy vegetables spring onions herbs stuff like rosemary is also great for stabilizing blood sugar and uh, you know broccoli get a lot of pigments into your into your salads different colors these darker darker vegetables like red cabbage broccoli kale spinach those things they're they're incredibly nutrient dense they have a ton of potassium magnesium vitamin k and uh, they're also going to help to maintain a healthy microbiome so so get more so let's wrap it all up together these three things that you should do first put some energy demands on your body whether through exercise fasting or simply walking before your foods secondly blunt the insulin response the king's too fat for his armor and thirdly eat a lot of fermented foods that feed your microbiome and it's gonna satiate you go find the breastplate stretcher burn some extra fat not because you want to lose weight but because it's healthier for you if you want to learn how to do the ketogenic diet then check out my free ebook simple keto i'll leave a link in the description but other than that thanks for watching click the like subscribe notification bell as well all those good things my name's seem stay keto adapted stay empowered <laughs> <laughs>